weaving the credits into the story in an interesting way. Waterworld probably takes the cake on that front, but these are definitely Moonfall-style opening credits, even if we now know, because of this movie, that this is all fake. Also, the H Brothers logos honestly look like part of the moon structure, so that's... the moon is hollow shadowing? Look, I'm not here to try to tell you that this movie is anything other than what it is, but this is an angle of the Earth from space that I can't say I've seen before. And sure, you know going in that the moon is gonna be a bad guy, but the sinister music playing as the moon comes around the horizon line? That's just great visual storytelling. This song is a perfect example of an overplayed jam that I, I think I'm sick of, but then the chorus hits and yeah, I'm obviously gonna crush the harmonies. As always, respect, Toto, respect. What does it even mean to miss the rains down in Africa? The lyrics are, I bless the rains down in Africa. Emmerich isn't known for his dialogue, but this is maybe his most relatable piece of dialogue yet. There are a few moments in life that throw you off, quite like finding out a lyric you've been singing for years is actually something completely different. I never knew why the Steve Miller band was singing about big old Chet Adelina. I didn't even know who that was, but obviously he was worth singing about. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times I see an astronaut slip away in a movie, it's never not going to haunt my nightmares. I love how intense this is. The ship is spinning and I kind of want to throw up, but also we see quick glimpses of the AI and Marcus floating away. Brutal. I'm just confirming that nope, like I thought, I could never work for NASA. I never even would have thought, yeah, we need boosters on the side of the shuttle in case it goes into an uncontrolled spin and we have to stabilize it. Can a solar flare cause the kind of disturbance you witnessed in the shuttle's onboard system? I guess, yes. Oof, work wife fail. My mom always said it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask permission. That's a solid philosophy, unless you're my kids. Oh crap, was that red or blue? Sorry Samuel, even frame by frame I couldn't see. So you could be about to wake up in goo or continue taking baths of rubber duckies in your head. Conspiracy theorist with a Make America Mexico Again sticker. We really are unique little weirdos. I think I could be a man that man that mama mama. Hm. You're seven and a half minutes late. Who's this guy, Narc Ruffalo? Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all week. Also a big fan of this Will Hunting fake out. I'd like a pastrami madness. This lady's living my dream right here. What the f***? What was the, the last one? Eh, I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Evans made a hot sauce called what the f***? Black, true sugar. Oh, you read my mind. Foreign exchange student who makes you coffee and then later saves your kid? She's a keeper. What would Elon do? Accuse someone of being a pedophile on Twitter? I don't know, there's a lot of history to pull from here. But also, whatever, I get it. I'll assume Houseman avoids social media. Fuzz Aldrin. A plus cat name. I also would have accepted Neil Clawstrong. It's an interesting move to make a pretty annoying conspiracy theorist with zero people skills end up being not only the hero, but also 100% correct. I'm not sure how I feel about it. If Emmerich makes uh, firmament crack next, I think I might have to start rethinking my life. When Apollo 12 dropped their empty fuel tank, the impact made the moon ring like a bell. Bong! That's actually true. Because the damn moon is hollow. That less so. We're prepared to pay whatever the bail is. Right now. Money's no object. Well, I guess that makes the defendant a flight risk. That has to be the stupidest thing to say to a judge. I know being rich usually works in these situations, but it's supposed to be the lawyer equivalent of slipping a 20 to the host. This is more like making it rain while yelling obscenities. Point is, cocky lawyer is a good reason for Sonny to be in jail for the weekend. Oh, hello. Are you new here? This is brutal, but it's definitely softened me up to Hausman a bit. We all have backstories. We've estimated a timeline of roughly three weeks. Maybe less than that. One thing I know about Roland Emmerich, he's gonna make disaster happen and he's gonna make it happen immediately. You better pray you have Vivica A. Fox or Dennis Quaid to come save you. Potentially. Great. I'll just brief the president on a maybe. I hate that this feels realistic. What am I supposed to do with the information you've given me? Pass it on to the people in charge? You trying to bribe me? In a courthouse? I just want to get my son back. Oh, but he doesn't even deny that he's bribing him. That's a dad move right there. Hey, one positive side to the moon careening towards Earth, you get some sweet full moon nights. An emergency meeting is being called at our usual place immediately. Three bagels. <laughs> a man who knows how to get butts in seats. Stand by for stage two. Nope. Come on, people. Think outside the box. Oswald did it! Even conspiracy theorists have some conspiracies they can't stand. Seriously, is there a deleted scene where Houseman leaves the atmosphere and says, There's no edge? Ever heard of a Dyson Sphere? Yeah. <laughs> I actually really appreciate that the astronaut didn't have to play dumb here. I know it's science fiction at this point in time, but something tells me that if you work for NASA, you've heard of a Dyson Sphere. You knew all this was happening before anyone. How? You're just gonna say I'm crazy again. Try me. Every megastructure has a rigid shell built around a power core. Something obviously happened to the one inside our moon, and that's why it's veering off course. Yeah, still crazy. Why'd you come here if you're not gonna believe me? 
This is a great moment that showcases how we can sabotage ourselves with unchecked enthusiasm. Harper asked how Hausman knew the moon was going to go off orbit. Instead, Hausman explains his bonkers idea that the moon is actually a mechanical shell harnessing the power of a white dwarf star. Then he gets all mopey when Harper doesn't immediately buy it. It's a hard sell to the guy who's been to space and he didn't even try to sell it. And like, to be fair, it's mathematically impossible. They've done studies on stuff like this. Humans don't keep secrets well. And when you're talking about NASA, not even mentioning every other space agency in the world, keeping a closed lid on something like the moon being hollow, yeah, it just, it just isn't possible. I never get tired of new creepy space robot sounds and these are no exception. Something very techno, but oh jeez, never mind. That's brutal. I, I don't like your sounds. <laughs> That was super scary and immensely disturbing, like more disturbing than I was expecting for a movie that's just supposed to be a fun, quick mood apocalypse. I'd like to think I wouldn't just stand there and watch a wave hit me. I'm pretty decent in a crisis, but also I feel like I might totally just stand there and watch a wave hit me. I'd also really want to see what's going to happen to the yacht. I can swim! Although I can swim, so maybe just imagine what happens to the yacht next time, Casey. So you're just going to quit? What do you want me to do? This is both real in that, yeah, of course he's bailing. He just saw a robot snake face munch three of his employees, but also real in that, yeah, of course he's bailing. He's ultimately just a government stooge and no job is worth your life. Space is supposed to make you feel small and fragile, but it's reminders like this that actually make my eyelid all twitchy. If the moon falls, we're all on our own. I'm a sucker for a shadowy silhouette of an unknown somebody. Extra points if it's Sergeant Oddball or President Snow, if you must. Either way, Donald Sutherland is genuinely a solid get for a cameo. You'll never not take him seriously, and just being there, I know that whatever he's been covering up is legit. The Apollo crew played ball. Everybody after. You're telling me that the moon was effectively the biggest cover-up in human history. And don't get me wrong, it's statistically impossible, but still super fun to think about. I have pressing business waiting for me on my desk. Dark, at least if you remember what's on his desk. I mean, yeah, maybe he was just cleaning it, but the lone bullet and him basically telling Fowler that it's all over makes me think this is the end for Papa Sutherland, making that a pretty grim line. Say what you will about the man, but nobody does sweeping epic disaster shots like Roland Emmerich. It is a great detail to have him wipe his sweaty bombs. And it is also a guaranteed way to make sure no one will shake your hand. Which is why I'm offering you your job back. Job implies compensation, but I guess having a planet tomorrow is better than minimum wage. Say yes, Brian. <laughs> Classic timing. Almost Edgar Wright timing. Potentially the most realistic moment in this film. You think Banksy's gonna pass up that opportunity? Take a look around you, man. It's worthless. Look, smart guy, it may be worthless now, but generally things return to some sense of normalcy. And if you don't think that's gonna happen, you should throw the gas in the wind too, because it's not gonna save you from the moon. Fall. The moon is even affecting the location guards. We've been here how long now? And nobody's bothered to paint over that? It's kind of growing on me. I bet somewhere in the world of this movie, someone is getting super rich making F the Moon t-shirts, and this guy is throwing money away. Read the market, fool. Thank you for getting me out. You thank your dad. Seriously, he basically had a genie with one wish, and he picked you. I'd do the same every time, but the point is, good dad win. Thankfully, our, our friends at SpaceX have a propellant depot currently in orbit. I love Elon. You know, at first I was all snarky, like, what, did Elon contribute to this movie in some way? But no, he's the perfect idol for this movie, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, Jungla. When Jude was born, I was all gung-ho about teaching him Spanish and English at the same time, and then I remembered I suck at languages, and hopefully he can teach me at some point. But helping your kids be multilingual is the way to go. These people here won't have a planet unless we figure something out. Say what you will about this movie, but Patrick Wilson brought his A-game and left it all on the set. I'm not cleared for this. Well, I'm the acting director of NASA, so I just cleared you. Aha! So this is the scenario in which you can just make things true by thinking them. Silver linings, you know, world might end, but you know I'm getting my new friends to make me a four-star general or something. I've got IBS. All the coolest people I know do. I have debilitating anxiety. Same, but also this is the crap that Emmerich movies are for, and I actually love the, no, I don't want to go, and probably shouldn't for all these reasons that will absolutely put your lives in danger, twist on the usual wish fulfillment. He's like, I could fill the entire shuttle with poop and suffocate you idiots, and they're all, hey man, it's cool, we're here to make your dreams come true. Cynicism aside, the world is ending, so pop some benzos and let's do this, friend. Hugging. I should warn you, my license has been revoked. Honesty. Well, that's hitting a little too close to home after Hurricane Ian. I'm starting to understand why we're at the moon crashing to Earth stage of disaster movies. I mean, yeah, that's effectively unnerving, but also super cool, and I'd be split between terrified for my life and just super stoked to be seeing cool things happening. You ever just think about how a weird rock in space changes what our huge bodies of water do? Because, like, obviously this is sci-fi, but 
Also not that crazy. I'm gonna go lie down and try not to picture myself stuck to the side of a giant dirt ball zooming through nothingness. Hey, seven. Screw it, go for ignition. I appreciate his urgency. I always assumed the countdown was less about when I'd push the button and more this is when it's gonna happen. But what do I know? We've established NASA doesn't want me. <laughs> what? Fun and horrifying. I think I'd be feeling a solid mix of those two emotions. We're underwater, guys! Which is fine, right? Space is basically water. Maybe I should work for NASA. No idea if any of the science here is anything remotely close to real, but the design of this scene is epic and that shot looks like a prog metal album cover. Can we do it? Oh, I don't know! Full of honesty today. I just don't get tired of a shuttle over the Earth shot. Aw, and even Buzz Cackrin made it to space. I can't believe I just did that. Honestly, I can't believe he's not just panic barfing nonstop. That's what I'd be doing, or like we established earlier, filling the shuttle with poop. Fueling valves are closed. Let's take a minute to appreciate that nothing went wrong because something always goes wrong with tasks like this in space movies. Well, that's just straight metal. Be cool. That was some serious quick thinking. Three, two, one. And some serious teamwork happening up here. Yup. I know, avalanches and generally bad stuff, but it's still yup. The synth womp in the background of this truly brain exploding shot. But also enjoying the silence of space. It's always unsettling. Why are you trying to ruin the star shape for me, AI nanobots? I'm Brenda Lopez's son! Huh, apparently not a big fan of Brenda. I have a right to defend my property, Tom. Karen, that's enough! Oh, right. Got it now. Thanks so much, Karen. Mountains seem really safe, guys, but still, yep. Where is your dad? He's up there trying to stop what's happening. Up where? Outer space. Tom. Of course he is. That's a way to avoid rent. Actually, yeah, taxes too, if he'd been as smart as Steve Rockhound Buscemi. Again, say what you will about the man, but Roly knows how to raise the stakes. Good luck getting home without a shuttle. Are we dead? Fair. Fair question. But I really love the orchestral score that switches to electronic synth as they enter the moon. You know, because humans aren't in control anymore and AI doesn't have a brass section? An even more jarring synth womp to really nail home how tiny and insignificant the humans are. <laughs> oh! Guns on the ground! Right now! Sonny, I knew there would be a moment where I started to like you. They've harnessed the building blocks of the universe! He's so excited you'd think he'd solve the riddle of the Song of Ice and Fire. As a guy who's only seen Elysium, I'm getting a lot of Elysium vibes from this. Anyone else? You know, Elysium with Matt Damon did a whole video and never mind. His theory is that all megastructures are actually arcs. Ziggy smokes a lot of weed. <laughs> Funny delivery, but also, it would seem that your point would be, well, I'll let you figure it out. Gotta be honest, this was a surprise. The hint that something inside the moon was helping them while the AI was trying to get in. It's more complex than I expected this, oh, it's, it's an entire half of the movie, but you get my point. Moon bad would have been easy enough. But also, honestly, I'd fully respect it if some alien beast just boarded and ate them right here. Killer plot twist. Sorry, moon's a spaceship and everyone's dead. Should've listened to Patrick Wilson. Look at that face. A face only a mother could love. What a cast. Michael Pena is way underrated. Also, let's get this guy doing more action scenes. Oh, f Come up and send I take it back. He's beautiful in a deliverance kind of way. Let's go back! No! He's gone! We need that oxygen! More comeuppance. Should have gone back. I gave that to you the day before I left on my last mission. So this is a happy memory? All the memories of my son are happy. It realistically takes Harper a few seconds to realize what's going on, and he responds to the alien as if it's Sunny the first time, and then it clicks after the second question, and he says, my son. The way the light seems to envelop them makes me feel weird, like it's almost wrapping around his body. And the sound design. The echo and, like, pre-echo? The different pitches of voices really lends to the otherworldliness of it all. Eerie, but not necessarily scary. They expanded from their home planet into habitats they built in space. Okay, this is Elysium. Elysium? Seriously? I already mentioned it once in this video. Never mind. Your ancestors had created a perfect and harmonious world which served them in all of their daily lives. You call it Fully automated AI. luxury communism? Oh, right. AI. Also, as a guy who has only seen Elysium, I'm getting a lot of Elysium. So basically everything that Casey and Ziggy said was true. Fields, megastructures, Dyson spheres. I have to believe Oswald did it. Oswald did it! Oh.
Damn it, Gary, not now. Got something for everyone. A little Big Bang, a little creationism, even a little geocentrism if you squint. We're part of an intergalactic war that's been going on for billions of years. Honestly, give this man an award just for saying that line so deadpan. That's crazy. Let's go, you son of a... Nice. Now it's an action movie. AI thing getting all squiddy or spidery. Ludicrous mode. Whoops, now you've pissed him off because clearly that's plaid. Go find mommy, okay? But daddy. Just keep walking. Look, man, there were options, namely sharing the mask while you carried her, but I'm going to blame the lack of O2 in heightened state. We get very hierarchy of needs at times like these. So, self-sacrifice. Pena always plays a good, if complicated, dude, and he always dies. Your real one, Kiki. I love how the AI sort of looks like a hen, but also a spider, and maybe Starro, and like a mobile Sarlacc? But mostly it just looks awesome and scary. Finally cleaning that city up. I'm not sure who I'm offending here, because I can't tell what city it is, so you can't get mad at me. Aw, oh, crap, it's New York City. But I appreciate that they left one World Trade Center alone. But also, real talk, I appreciate Emmerich's insistency on large-scale destruction. There are plenty of movies where existence is on the brink, but all it really means is things almost get bad. Roland Emmerich continually destroys highly populated areas of his films. He might be the PG-13 director with the highest body count. You're putting the fate of the world in the hands of your ex-wife? She's never let me down before. Wait, didn't she divorce you? But honestly, Julia could get them out of this pickle, too. Get you someone who's fun to make out with and could probably save the world. My mom always said it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask permission. Hey, ho, that's a callback. Better to beg for forgiveness than ask permission. You didn't kill that astronaut. You saved Eric the Fowler. And you're not killing me now. You're saving everyone else. I love that Casey has enough introspection to realize that this could potentially mess Harper up and he needs to make it clear that it's not his fault. I'm not a real doctor. Go save the world, Dr. Hausman. Aw, and Harper gives Hausman the thing he needs right back. More self-sacrifice. Yes, this is exactly what I want out of a movie called Moonfall. More of this sort of stuff in every movie. We make a pretty good team, huh? But a friend team. Love a solid non-romantic ending. Although, if I escape the moon at the last second while saving the planet, I'm still gonna want to kiss someone, so hopefully a friends who can kiss team? Dad! <laughs> Double hugging. Where's Tom? I mean, he, he might be fine. The oxygen came back right after he passed out. You should go look... Oh, n no. Just, you're just gonna move on. Get back with your ex. No, that's, that's cool, too. I'm so sorry. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's a silver lining. Moon has rings now. Aw, they brought Space Cat back for him. No freaking way! You'd think he just got pardoned by Danny. It started with what? Sequel bait right into some synthy jams. Ain't complaining. Well, hey there, the moon sure did fall, didn't it? Roland Emmerich actually has a pretty diverse filmography, but I don't think anyone goes into a movie like this expecting to really marvel at the dialogue or thematic elements. And something Roland tends to do is have a lot of B and C stories that just aren't that great. No offense to Michael Pena, because he was ultimately underutilized, especially if he's actually dead and that sequel bait was for real. But, I mean, once our main heroes got to space, that's really all I cared about. Don't get me wrong, I think we need to be tied to the Earth with other characters. Obviously, we wouldn't get that sweet, sweet destruction without it. But I think we're often waiting to just get back to the moon. One of the main things Emmerich struggles with is threading that needle of making a disaster movie that's still fun and even funny. I'm not always sure that he knows who he's making these movies for, other than me, guy who likes most things. But Patrick Wilson and Halle Berry actually make that work with how they drive the film and play their characters. They're both clearly acutely aware that this is a B-movie, and they navigate the tone deftly as the film goes from a disaster film to a galactic space opera. They joke when appropriate and take it entirely seriously when needed, which helps us take it seriously. And it also adds to the campy factor, which makes it much more enjoyable. And then John Bradley's character was interesting because he's the nut job, but also our surrogate. He's the one astonished by everything, except that all of his theories were correct. It makes for a fun dynamic. So the cast was all great, but the film's real standout is the overall concept. The idea that the moon is leaving its orbit, followed by the fact that it's actually a hollow megastructure, followed by the fact that it's all in relation to a war that's been going on since before the Earth existed, is just so bananas, and I love it. I love it so much, I want to see pre-Moonfall, the Moonfall prequel. But the design and visuals were killer, when the moon gets so close to Earth that it visibly messes with gravity? Dope. Everything in space looked fantastic. B-movie or not, it's gorgeous. Right down to the look and movement of the AI. You've probably picked up on this by now, but I, I think I wanted this movie to be more of the space stuff and less of the people stuff. Either way, it was creative and weird, and they went for it, and I love that.
And while it's not entirely new, the idea that machines turn on humans is always entertaining. The movie mentions that the AI essentially served humans doing humanity's bidding, which, in my opinion, also made it seem like the AI had a good reason to rise up. The following genocide makes me no longer feel sorry for the AI, but I still think it's a compelling backstory. Those types of stories where maybe the robots had a point interests me. The Animatrix explored it a little, more recently the Orville actually had a pretty similar look at it. Rintado's Metropolis is another excellent example of this. It also has maybe the best use of a Ray Charles song in a film outside of Ray, and while I'm definitely not comparing an all-time anime classic to you know, Moonfall. I do think it's some of those details that make this movie fun. And at the end of the day, that's all I was really expecting, and it delivered. Next week, a movie that everyone was pretty split on, my circle seemed to hate it, but you know, what are we here for if not for that? See you next week. You scanned your consciousness. You're part of the moon now. We should get started.